Welcome back. Uh, this is Kirsten with JK Fiber Arts. Uh, today we are going to uh, explore the wonderful world of cable plying uh, and cable spinning a, a cable ply yarn. I have this uh, really, really glorious, amazing fiber from Camash Fiber Arts. Um, it is uh, merino uh, and mulberry silk, and it's one of their custom blends. It's called Stained Glass. It was for their holiday uh, pre-order, which I jumped on, and she gave me a bonus ounce, apparently, because um, I ordered 10 ounces, and this looks like 300 grams, and I believe that that's 11 ounces. So, yay, even more wonderfulness to play with. Uh, so um, I'll tell you a little bit about cable plying. Um, cable ply is uh, going to be at least a four ply yarn. You can do as many plies as you want. Um, uh, there's a, a book that I love. It's called um, Spin Control by Amy King. And uh, she did one where you do uh, chain plies. So you spin two singles, chain ply them, and then ply those two chain plies, reverse ply, and that gives you um, a, a six ply. She did uh, three singles, chain plied those, and then plied them together, and uh, that um, gives you a nine ply. Uh, why do you want all these plies? That's an excellent question. Uh, and the answer is you'll get a much rounder yarn, and it's really gonna give you spectacular stitch definition. And a very strong, hard-wearing yarn. What I'm going to do is just the very basic, uh, this will be a four ply uh, cable ply yarn. Uh, and uh, I'm gonna divide this into quarters and then I will spin my singles normally with the normal amount of energized twist, the normal amount of plyback. Uh, the magic is gonna happen when you ply them separately. So what I'll do is I'm gonna spin four singles my normal direction of my single spin, which is Z. Then I'm going to take two of those singles, ply them together in S, and I'm gonna ply those uh, over plied, and we'll get to that. Uh, and then I'll take the other two singles and ply those S over plied. And then I'm gonna take those two separate two ply yarns and ply them back together Z and that's gonna give me the uh, cable ply. I have divided these up into fours. The plan here, uh, this is so beautiful, but you can see the colors are really well blended. Um, you know, I'm a big fan of spinning from the fold, but this one, I don't think it would be very useful. Uh, I'm gonna spin this straight, and then we're gonna spin them all together. Um, I, I toyed with the idea of adding in uh, a separate um, alpaca, uh, a black alpaca as a single and uh, plying each of uh, the alpaca singles with the uh, stained glass single and uh, really increase the amount of fiber I have. But I'm not sure I want to dilute all this gorgeous silk. I think that I'm going to um, do a little experiment first. Uh, I'm gonna just do a little test and see how this looks as a single. I'm using my uh, smaller uh, whirl because Merino does usually take a little bit more twist. And we're going to go ahead and start here. Um, one of the things to uh, try to determine is you know, what weight you want your final yarn to be. And um, the, uh, depending on what you're spinning, if you're spinning from a woolen prep, uh, which is the uh, airier, loftier bat, when you chain ply it, you may actually end up with a yarn that is finer weight than the two ply because when you two ply it, it's gonna be a little fluffy, which is what it's supposed to be. Uh, so when you do this um, from top, it'll be a little more compact. So um, I, I don't expect it to get much thinner, but keep that in mind if you are spinning from a bat and you are doing a, or a woolen prep uh, roving, it may compact uh, depending on the fiber and how you spin it especially if you do a uh, woolen uh, draw, long draw. I would like this final yarn to be um, around a uh, Aran weight. Um, I have a, a project in mind. Uh, so uh, cables, which I'm a cable girl, I love cables. Uh, so uh, the cabled yarn lends itself to cables because of the 
absolutely wonderful stitch definition. So let's uh, see where we are here with WPI and um, plyback. So this single right now is about a 22, uh, 22, 24, I'm gonna say it's 24, it's a 24. And so I'm gonna do the uh, plyback test here. I'm gonna wind it onto the bobbin and then pull it back out, pinch, pinch, and then, um, oh, that looks really pretty. Uh, so for this single, I'm spinning a normal energized single. I'm not over plying my single for this. Uh, and I am shooting for that 30 that I always like. Um, this is around 15. I'm just gonna put a little bit more twist on this, but it looks nice, it's very pretty. I'm shooting for an Aaron weight to a, a bulkier weight yarn. So we'll see um, how it goes here. Uh, and I think that I'll be in the ballpark with this. Uh, the goal here is we're going to spin four singles that are uh, my, I'm going to do the 22 uh, single. I'm going to add a little bit more twist to this because, again, the merino needs a little bit more twist. It's a little bit slipperier fiber. I think I forgot what was. I have this handy dandy lap blanket here to uh, show you guys. You can see it is black against my poorly chosen black leggings. <laughs> yeah, that's better. That's more twist on that. And you can see here. And my consistency is not bad either. And now that it has more twist, it's compressed a little bit more. So when I measure the um, WPI, we are, we are right at that 11. If you find you're getting too much twist um, for the uh, speed that you're traveling, you can increase the uh, uptake um, on your wheel. Um, for this wheel uh, that I spin my singles on, this is a double drive wheel, and uh, um, I just turn this and I can increase the draw onto my bobbin, and when I do that, it will draw the yarn on quicker so it doesn't have as much time to accumulate twist. I'm also doing more of a, a forward draw on this. I'm doing a worsted spin uh, because I really want to keep uh, this to be a really good wearing, hardy wearing, rounded yarn with this four ply. But this is going to look really good and I'll uh, check back in with you here in a few minutes and show you the bottom. Here is the uh, artsy version of my single in progress. These are my four single bobbins, and we'll be ready to uh, two-ply each of these together to make two two-plies. What I ended up doing was uh, thickening my single up just a little. I ended up going with a 20 WPI, and um, I'll show you that here. And I think this is going to get me closer to my Aaron weight given that there's so much compression when you uh, spin a cable ply. Next, I wanna show you the uh, ply back uh, test sample. When I switched to the 20 WPI, um, I made a new one, and uh, you can see that this one came out to a 12 WPI, and I think that's uh, gonna be uh, a better uh, size for what I want. All right, we are ready to do our first ply of our cable ply here. Let's see if we can get this to work. It's gonna be a little bit loud in the beginning. All right. So the magic for this is over plying this ply. So the, um, what we really want, so I need less, less draw, um, is about 50 degrees of ply. And that is uh, what you need to give you the magical cable ply. Uh, so if you under ply it, you're not gonna get that cabled look. So it's gonna be really important. So we're looking at the S 
and we want it to be around that 50 degree mark. And right now, oh, that's right on it. Oh, that's good. So if you look at it, you'll be like, yeah, this is a, uh, you know, way more twist than normal. Um, but that's what we want because then we're going to take this two ply that is over plied at the 50 degree angle. And then we're going to Z ply it again at a normal angle and it'll give us the cabled appearance. And this is really where the magic happens. So we want this to uh, be over plied uh, to that 50 degree mark. Uh, if it's 30, it's not gonna um, give us what we want. So it really, really want. So when I spun the single, we spun it normal, uh, which is, you know, around 30 degrees or so. And then this one, we wanna make sure that we're really uh, applying it so that it's quite steep of an angle here. We want 50, 50 degrees. And I put my um, whirl on the smallest one so that I will have the maximum uh, flyer revolutions per uh, revolution of the wheel. So I don't have to treadle a lot more than I would typically for a regular ply. And it's also gonna be important that you have your tension adjusted properly because you don't want it to pull into the wheel too fast. So um, I would take off some of your draw, which is what you saw me do when I first started. The second I started, I was like, oh, that's pulling it in too fast. Um, it needs to, I need to have enough time to ply this so that I can get that 50 degree before it goes on to the bobbin so I don't want it to be yanking it out of my hand. Uh, and then we'll just stop here periodically and see what we have. Let's see here. I like this, just gonna make sure we're still doing well. I'm gonna stop this just so it makes less noise. I got the fireplace going, I've got my auto level winder, so a lot of background noise here. Uh, this one, and now you, you see, I would have thought that this was right at 50, but it looks like I'm at 45. So I need a little more twist in this. And uh, that's surprising for me. I thought, I mean, I, I'm not surprising that I didn't have it at 50, but surprising because I, I really thought, oh yeah, that's spot on. Um, and I measured it not that long ago. Yep, it's 45. So more twist, more twist. This is a good time to really get into that rhythm, you know, counting the treadles. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Let's see if this gives me what I want, that five treadle. Oh yeah, that is that is way, way tighter now. Got it now, this is it, that's the magic. So I need five good treadles. The other thing I have to maintain is the distance between my hands with that five treadle, because when I counted, my hands are about this far apart. If I'm gonna make my hands further apart, it'll take more treadles to distribute that twist throughout. So it's all about consistency. Uh, let's see, let's, uh, oh, let's do a, a, just a ply back just to show you here. Um, and you can sort of see the uh, cable already forming here on the ply back. Do you see that? Um, the other thing is when you uh, cable ply, um, a lot of times it's gonna compress your yarn because you're putting so much twist into it. Even though I spun WPI 20 singles, uh, and uh, when I um, was doubling them over, I was getting around a, a 12 WPI. I'm, uh, n this is now four ply. And uh, when I was two plying it, I was at a 12. And if you look now, I'm really at like an 11 or a 10. It's not that big of a difference, maybe a nine, but it's not a massive difference. I definitely didn't you know, double the thickness of this yarn um, from the two ply when I do that. So here's, here's the uh, two ply and here's this uh, with the uh, cable ply back here. So I had so much twist when I did my ply back test before, I was like in a fat in a 12 and I'm actually now in a 14, maybe even, ah, actually that's a 16. So I'm in a 16 after I compressed it. 
you know, 16 to 18, really. I mean, that's the thinness on that is almost a sock yarn. Um, so, uh, I'd say that um, it's probably more like a 16, but when I, uh, was doing the, uh, ply back on my regular two ply, it was a 12. And, uh, so when I'm two plying this, it's actually thinner than what my, uh, two ply ply back test was. What I want to show you is this is the ply back test that I did for the um, two ply when we started. My two ply ply back test when I was um, spinning the single Z is right in 12. Here is the two ply from right now and then this is the one when I plied it back on itself with a normal 30 uh, degree um, angle of a twist for the ply. And you can see the difference. This one that I did um, at a normal twist is thicker. And this one, same WPI, but now this is with the 40 or with the 50 degree um, angle apply. And you see how much it's compacted. Now, when I go the other way, it will plump up some and you can see here. So this is what it's going to look like well, in the neighborhood of what it's going to look like when it's chain plied uh, or I mean not chain plied but when it's cable plied sorry uh, so let's do a quick measure here and I can say that you know this one is I'm going to say that this is a nine so this is a, a basically a spot on worsted here um, maybe now nah, I don't think it's a, it's too thin to be an Aaron weight. Yeah. So it's a 10 or a nine. Sorry. So this is a worsted weight and this was a 12 at two ply. So this did not double. And in fact, when you see them next to each other, you're like, wow, I really thought it would get bigger if you added two more plies to it. It's not that different. Uh, and that is because the yarn will compact. Um, and this is a worsted prep yarn, and I mostly did a worsted spin with this. Uh, so um, my compacting was not as pronounced as it would be if I was doing a woolen spin and a woolen prep fiber like a art bat or something. That would compress a lot more to the point where your final yarn might actually be thinner than the one you started your single with. Um, so just interesting side fact is uh, that you will get compression. So account for that when you're trying to plan your final yarn size. And don't forget to uh, continue to stop and just make sure. Better to check uh, and um, make sure that you have the angle that you think you have. Then get there and find out that it's under plied because then you won't get that beautiful cabled effect. You know, as you guys all know, black black in general is a tough one to uh, spin and knit as far as being able to see your angles. I, I should have picked a better um, example yarn for you, but I really wanted to spin this one. Um, but there are some color pops in here, so I'm able to find, I just try to find a spot where there's color to stop and check things. I wanted to add this close-up photo for measuring the angle since it's difficult to see the uh, angle with black yarn. This first picture is a little bit under plied and the uh, second picture I have that 50 degree angle almost spot on and you really need that for the magic of the cable. Final close up you can really see the uh, cable coming to life on the uh, ply back at our 50 degree uh, angle of ply. This is what the bobbin looks like after the uh, first uh, two ply. I'm going to do another one just like this one and then we'll ply them together Z. We are ready to do the final step in the uh, cable plying process. We have two of the uh, overplied uh, two ply singles at the 50 degree angle of twist that we plied S. Now we're going to ply these two two plies together Z and we'll end up with our four ply cable ply. And now I'm going to take those two separate two plies that were plied S, ply them back together Z. And that is why we over plied the um, two plies. And so Z it is. Here we go. A little more draw. There we go. So if we look at this, oh wow, that's already doing, giving us a beautiful 
beautiful cable ply. Um, I think I'm gonna have to increase my draw a little bit just because, whoops, don't go S. I always, <laughs> I'm always S on this wheel, so doing it. <laughs> I might actually take this up a, I'm gonna take my um, whirl and make it a little slower because uh, I don't think I need all this twist in here. And I'm gonna increase my tension just a touch so I can um, manage that twist a little better. And you're not gonna need as much twist when you're twisting it back, because remember, we over it the other direction, so a lot of that energy is gonna work for us. And let's take a look at our uh, WPI here. And um, I'm still at about a nine. Um, maybe, maybe an eight, because uh, I am letting it relax a little bit, so it is puffing up a little bit. So I am in that worsted to um, Aaron weight yarn at the moment. And see, this was the uh, two ply here. That was our sample from way back at the beginning. Now that it's four plied, and again, this is merino and um, silk. And this was a worsted prep yarn, so it's not going to compress as much uh, as a uh, woolen prep. But we went from a 12 was the two ply to the eight four ply cable yarn. Looking good. And uh, I just wanted to show you, you still want your ply back to be the, the same. You know, you want that gentle twist with the opening at the end. So while I was talking to you, I let this unwind a bit because I had to let go to measure. And you can see what happened is now I lost some of my twist. And so I don't have quite as much in there. Right now I have my tension set so that it's almost pulling it out of my hand and just drawing it on to the bobbin. Let's check our ply back here. I don't want it to get too crazy. No, it's looking good. All right. So I did, I increased my tension so that it's almost drawing this on by itself. And I uh, went up a size on my uh, whirl so that um, I won't get as much twist in it because I just didn't need as much as I had um, for the uh, two ply. I'm just checking my ply back frequently. I just want to make sure putting a lot of effort into this yarn. I'm gonna make sure it's gonna be what I want. Yeah, that looks nice. Very nice. Really happy with that. You can see my tension is literally just like pulling this out of my hand and onto the oven. And that is, um, you know, the way I, I set it. Usually I'm not a fan of it pulling it out of my hand, but I'm just holding very light tension with, um, oh, you can't even see my back here, with my back hand here. You can see it's just drawing it in. It almost feels like a sewing machine when it automatically advances the uh, fabric. Uh, and uh, I'm just going to keep checking just to make sure that we're on with our with our twist. So, you know, I'm losing a little bit here, but I actually really like the way this looks. So I think I'm just going to roll with that. It's uh, all working according to plan at the moment. <laughs> I love it when that happens. I'm just gonna finish uh, getting this on to uh, the bobbins. This will be two. This will take two jumbo bobbins. So I'm gonna keep doing this, and uh, I will uh, show you uh, the bobbins at the end. I always mean to show you the nitty naughty, but I get so excited I forget <laughs> to video it. And uh, I'll try to remember to do that this time, so we can see all you know what it looks like on the nitty naughty, and when it comes off the nitty naughty before it's set. Here is the uh, four ply uh, cable uh, ply. Uh, and I have two, one pretty full bobbin and one about oh, a little over halfway. What I have is um, I have uh, eight pieces of a uh, scrap yarn here, which I made white. Um, and uh, I'm gonna do two separate bobbins because there's a lot to wind onto one. And uh, when I use my uh, Nitty Naughty, um, each uh, time I go around, so you hold it, I hold it tight here, and I always start going over the hook, uh, the, the little flared side here, and you go, and you make this triangle, so you go down, and then up, and 
you're just making a V. So there's a V here and the V here. And then I rotate my hand around and I keep my hand between the V on the back side and there's a V here. So there's two Vs and then uh, you're just coming to the top of the next V. And, um, and when I wind this on, I, I wind it um, not super tight, but snug so that it's not uh, gonna fall off or uh, become too loose. Uh, you, you can um, get some of the tension out of the yarn this way, uh, or some of the twist out of the yarn this way. So I'm just gonna wind this on. Whoop. It's gonna take me a little while here. I also don't usually sit with my elbows on my knees when I do this. I was just trying to find a position where I could show you everything. Um, it's not quite as fluid. Um, also, you will find I am the worst skeiner in the history of the world. I, <laughs> I, I, I usually will pause, and um, I, when you pause, you wrap it around the uh, flared end here a couple times, and you can just set it down and walk away and come back later. Uh, and I do that, and I somehow almost always forget to unwrap it and then I always have a loop in my skein. This one I'm going to try really hard to not forget and um, have a beautiful skein. We'll see how it goes. Uh, what else you need to know about a nitty knotty? Uh, there's a, uh, uh, this is how you know how much yarn that you are winding on if you don't have a yarn um, uh, yardage meter. Um, I have one, so I don't count my loops anymore, but if you wanted to count the loops on here, each time I come the whole way around, that is um, going to be uh, two yards. And so if you count the loops, you're going to count each loop just on one arm and you double it. And that uh, is, uh, well, you count the loops. Say I have 20 loops here it would be 40 yards. So you just uh, double what you have. And this is the uh, Kromsky Nitty Knotty. It, it matches my wheel because, you know, I like everything matchy-matchy. So it is all the same color. Makes absolutely no difference. You can make this out of PVC pipe. And it doesn't even matter how long it is, as long as you know the distance um, around one uh, revolution. And I will... Uh, Turn this back on when I pop it off the nitty knotty. Here is my uh, first skein uh, on the nitty knotty. Hopefully this is on frame here. Yeah, we're gonna just slide it right off. There we go. And... Ta-da! Here it is. I don't know if you can see this. I'm gonna have to refocus, I think. Here it is. Here we are, hot off the nitty naughty. I was unable to get the whole thing into uh, focus here, but um, look at this. Absolutely gorgeous cable ply. Ah, it looks awesome. I am very excited about this yarn. It's wonderfully consistent and look at the gorgeous cabling. You can see it very clearly. This is an excellent example of an Aran weight cabled yarn. And look at the sheen on this. All I need to do now is uh, get it in a soak and then uh, I will show you the uh, final yarn. Here is the uh, final two skeins of this uh, cabled yarn. The only thing that I will say was a little disappointing was it had this beautiful sheen before I set it and um, I use cold water. Euclid wool wash and dried it in a towel, gave it a little snap as usual. There was a lot of bleeding. I had, uh, the water was completely blue. And I think that uh, I may have lost uh, some of the uh, the sheen or the dye, or it may have, it's hard to get black. So, you know, if this was, uh, this was white merino and they dyed it black, uh, it's hard to not have bleeding. But it's still, it's, it is divinely soft. And it's um, still uh, very clearly a black yarn. 
and uh, I am just, I just, I'm in love with it. It's going to look great. It is beautifully consistent, and um, amazingly, or maybe not so amazingly because I did put a lot of thought into this, uh, I did end up with the air and weight yarn that I wanted. Uh, here is the uh, 8 um, WPI. I'm very pleased. This is Kirsten with JK Fiber Arts, and until next time, spin happy.